Hey everybody, John for the media here, and there's more crazy news regarding the latest power move in order to push towards a new world order, a new economic world order, and more chaos and destruction worldwide in order to push people further into servitude. Um, as we see here, Ukraine says it derailed Russian attack plan as Kiev offensive resumes you know uh <laughs> there's so much to this story from the president of ukraine being a television actor who literally played a president on television to the fact that yes russia at the same time has been calling for a new world order for a long time we have the economic reset that we're going into we have china's involvement in this we have israel's involvement in this we have crazy footage coming out from ukraine of just unbelievable attacks on buildings. But then we're also finding out at the same time that there's countless videos coming out that say Russia is attacking people in Ukraine. And it turns out it's actually friendly fire from Ukrainian troops themselves. There is so much to unpackage here. And honestly, yes, a big part of this is a distraction story to pull away from the COVID tyranny that we witnessed for two years. However, I believe this is a morphing uh, from COVID tyranny into this at the same time simultaneously, I think this is their attempt at global bondage, economic reset. And um, obviously, everyone will come together as a patriot if it means saving their country, this giant landmass. Uh, this is statism in a nutshell, my friends. And there's so much to go into today in this video. I have many, many, many stories up, many videos, many images, and many uh, details that a lot of people aren't talking about. Like, why are Ukrainian soldiers burning documents next to the building, uh, in next to the government building in Kiev? Uh, well, there's a lot of reason to question basically everything that's happening. And I am actually contemplating getting into Ukraine in the next couple of weeks. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to. It has to be legally because, of course, I don't feel like getting shot on sight. Um, we're going to do whatever we can to get the truth from the ground while also not distracting from the vaccine issue, which has rattled the world as well. We're going to get into this and more today, my friends. But first, make sure to check the links below. Go get funding.com, Patreon, subscribe, sir. We have a PayPal address. We have a Bitcoin address. And we have a coin tree link with multiple different cryptocurrencies that you could donate in. If you please, we really appreciate any of the support uh, we can get as we do want to travel overseas right away and report on a bunch of stuff from COVID tyranny to, well, uh, this latest Ukraine stuff. Um, also, make sure to check out whamsurvival.com for long-term storable foods. <laughs> more and more reasons every day why we need to get ready, get prepared for um, what's coming to us. And it's never been more important to get long-term storable foods, my friends. Uh, so check that link below as well as check out rncstore.com, Richardson Nutritional Center, your source for Laetril Online, made famous by G. Edward Griffin's book, World Without Cancer. Get your apricot seeds, Laetril, vitamin B17, and amygdalin there. Now, anyway, let's get into this. <clears throat> Ukraine says it derailed Russian attack plan as Kiev offensive resumes. And they say there are no Russian troops in the capital, though many parts are now looking like a war zone. Zelensky followed up by saying that Ukraine has derailed Russians' attack plans. And of course, we're seeing crazy videos from the capital where it certainly does look like a war zone. Now, there's a lot of evidence that um, Ukrainian tanks, like we've seen video recently of Ukrainian tanks running over cars and then the Ukrainian government claiming that um, their tank was Russian. Uh, lots of propaganda on both sides. Uh, there's no winning in this situation because at the end of the day, it's governments attacking governments over territory and um, over different offenses that obviously Ukraine has been, uh, the Ukrainian government has been killing Russians for quite a few years now. And they, they were taken over by a US puppet government in 2014. <clears throat> but with that said, at the end of the day, people get caught in the middle, innocent people that shouldn't be pulled into the conflicts of state that we are issuing or we're seeing and we're, we're seeing um radio channels talk uh, tell people how to make molotov cocktails in ukraine uh it looks like honestly ukraine might just actually be taken over once again by russia <clears throat> now um we have seen this recent news out of reuters russia vetoes un security action on ukraine as china abstains china is abstaining from the vote 
Russia has been creating somewhat of a coalition with China for quite a few years. More evidence that Russia isn't just some innocent country caught in the middle of this. People keep saying they're going after the deep state in Ukraine. Give me a break, my friends. This is all part of a global power battle that pushes people into bondage worldwide. It's easy to just believe, yeah, Russia is the innocent one because it does appear on the surface like they are when you actually look at the long term or the, the, the rollout of this over the last 10 years, especially um, in Ukraine and how um, the you know puppet governments have been attacking Russia over there and pushing them into a position where they feel like they have to shoot back or be taken over. <laughs> but with that said, Russia is part of a global order and Putin has been calling for a new world order and climate change nonsense for years and has been working with the Chinese government and the Chinese government was propped up by Israel in the first place. And we know how this works. They play both sides, create order out of chaos, and then everyone bows uh, at the boots of the well-oiled thugs, which we are witnessing right now. Russia's military announces bigger advance on all sectors as Zelensky vows Ukrainians will fight. Um, and so we're seeing this Germany working on a way to exclude Russia from SWIFT, which is huge. Um, and I, I, I'm going to go into that uh, shortly a bit more later. Advisor to Ukraine's interior minister says Russian troops are approaching uh, Zaporozhye, a nuclear pa a plant. Uh, Ukraine's Z Zelensky says uh, Azerbaijan and Turkey presidents propose to organize talks with Russia and Germany to send Ukrainian or uh, Ukraine stinger missiles, anti-tank weapons. Now, of course, the U.S. has been um, arming the Ukrainians for a couple months now to a point where <coughs> a lot of people should be asking questions at this point. But obviously, um, it's uh, it's a lot to get people to ask uh, questions. Seriously. Um it, these days, everyone has been pushed into such a slumber. Everyone's just tired, exhausted, and wants to follow the line so they don't have to be, they don't feel uncomfortable outside of the crowd. We've seen that with the vaccine issue. U.S. government just admitted this is a war that will determine who will rule the world. And this is quite important, my friends, as it says here. <clears throat> On Thursday, State Department spokesman Ned Price made a stunning admission regarding what this war is really all about. According to Price, Russia and China also want a world order, but he warned that if they win, their world order would be profoundly illiberal. <laughs> China has given ta tacit approval <clears throat> for Russian President Va Vladimir Putin's latest invasion of Ukraine in the judgment of U.S. officials as part of a joint effort to undermine the institutions that America and allied leaders established to minimize conflict in the decades following World War II. Russia and the PRC... Uh, want a world order, State Department spokesman Ned Price said Wednesday. But this is an order that is and would be profoundly illiberal. It is an order that is in many ways destructive rather than ad ad additive. <clears throat> Remember, the U.S. government is the one that has been propping up proxy wars all over the world, bombing countries for years. They're currently bombing countries, and they have the balls to actually point fingers at Russia. Uh, it continues here. It would take an entire book to unpack everything that Price said here. First of all, by stating that Russia and China also want a world order, he has tacitly admitted that the United States and other Western nations desire to have a world order of their own. Well, of course. And he implied um, that what we are witnessing is a battle over who will ultimately run the world order. That should deeply alarm all of us. Wouldn't it be nice to live in a world where nobody had global domination as their goal? Um, I, I want to point out that... Uh, when they talk about China and Russia working on a world order, keep in mind who propped up China and who propped up Russia. <clears throat> so the U.S. government armed, uh, like, well, they they propped up Hitler, uh, the propaganda anyway, against the Communist Party in Germany in the early 1930s, um, and then propped up the uh, U USSR, the most murder, like, killed so many more people than almost any government in the world other than China, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, and the U.S. government propped up the USSR against uh, against Hitler because Hitler was about to defeat communism in that region. Whether you like it or not, that is the case. That's a historically that's his, a historic fact. Um, with that said, <clears throat> then the U.S. government armed and funded the Mujahideen against the USSR later on and then shook hands um, with the collapse of the Soviet Union and morphed it into <clears throat> somewhat of an Israeli puppet state which had some anti-establishment views that went against the U.S. world order, um, which in many ways pulled, it became a tug of war of some kind. Now, at the same time, we have to remember that 
China has been defended from the beginning for, by the U.S. government. The U.S. government destroyed Japan when Japan was about to completely end the Chinese Communist Party, which was propped up by Israel in the first place. Um, and there were starvations in China. And then Pearl Harbor happened, which was allowed to happen so that the U.S. could go in and, and stop Japan from uh, defeating China, which they're very close to doing. <clears throat> and just like they didn't want um, Hitler defeating the USSR. They wanted communism to spread like a plague worldwide. That's a fact. Now, fast forward, <laughs> the U.S. government in the 1970s, Henry Kissinger met with Mao Zedong um, to create an artificial alliance with China to save them from another starvation event at the end of Mao's life. And that led into the creation of the Trilateral Commission under Zbigniew Brzezinski during the Carter administration, which propped up China as a massive super state. And the idea was to create technocracy worldwide and a world order based in technology and technocracy, which we're now seeing today. So when we see China and Russia as this world order, we have to remember that they too were propped up by those in the shadows. If you know your history, you know this isn't part of some actual power battle. This is part of a plot, a script in order to push people into global bondage and use war in order to get people to fight in invisible enemies without knowing what they're actually fighting for or why, so that governments can send us out as pawns to sacrifice for the king and the queen. And then they have technocracy, they have war, they have destruction, they have starvation, they have vaccines, they have uh, eugenics operations, they have supply chain issues, they have an economic collapse. That's what all of this is about, my friends. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. In devastating move, it says, U.S. weighs sanctions on Russia's central bank as Germany backs targeted removal of Russia from SWIFT. Again, <clears throat> this is the economic reset. It was supposed to happen by about 2025. That's a Klaus Schwab thing. Great Reset, World Economic Forum. I mean, it's, it shouldn't be surprising to anyone that these people are all tied at the hip. I'll show you. This. Wait, let me fast forward. You. There we go. Russia, Ukraine, US, Canada. They all are working with the World Economic Forum. They're all working on the Global Economic Reset. And that will push people into panic into poverty, into starvation, and push them, force them into the SDR special drawing rights at the United Nations and a creation of a global currency tied to social credit where they need a vaccine, they need carbon credits, they need all these different things. They have to be a good boy, good girl to the government in order to use that currency or else are forced to use the other hyperinflated currencies that are useless and won't be accepted in most places. This is why we need privacy coins, my friends. This is why we need things like Epic Cash and Monero. This is why we need to get out of the banking system. This is how they target you. And they were targeting Russian bank accounts recently as well. Out of, the UK was doing that. Um, they were also pushing for, um, well, they were freezing bank accounts, I should also mention, in Canada just a week and a half ago, everyone seems to just have conveniently forgotten about that tyranny that's currently still taking place. Anyway, the point is, this is one of the pushes that many of us have been predicting. The push towards a global economic reset. And this is happening as the US dollar gets less and less support as a world reserve currency. And with less faith comes a collapse. And then comes a lot of poverty. And <clears throat> some countries are pushing back. Other countries are going along with it. I assure you, it's all part of a script that will all come together very, very easily in the next year. Now, what's actually happening in Ukraine? To be entirely honest, <clears throat> unless you're there on the ground and you're seeing things for yourself, it's hard to really say. But we know that the Ukraine, Ukrainian government has been working heavily with the U.S. government and Israel for years and that they have been plotting to, well, um, take over the natural gas sector. They've been plotting to well, you look at the Biden administration and, every, and Nancy Pelosi and everyone that's involved and their connection to the Ukrainian government and the gas companies over there. Isn't it strange that so many people that are family members of one of some of the top politicians in the U.S. all seem to work for gas companies in Ukraine? Um, there's a lot to be said about that, and it goes much deeper. It's part of the world order agenda and the economic reset. And I'm pretty sure that Ukraine is in on it just as much as Russia's in on it. And, um, you know, they sacrifice their people as per usual. Uh, I mean, again, 
Zelensky is literally a television actor who played the president. Oh, and look at him. He's brave. He's standing with people on the ground in Ukraine. Yeah, because it's a script. If he was actually in danger, though, they might sacrifice him at the end of the day. Who knows? There's a good chance he'll just throw him under the bus like so many. But he's playing the script at the moment. Uh, If he was actually in danger or viewed himself as in danger, he wouldn't be on the ground fighting for Ukraine. Who knows? Maybe they'll fake his death just for headlines so that they could bring NATO in further into this conflict. And the fact that people are like all these anti-war activists are just begging for war with Russia. It's insanity. And this has been going on for a long time. And we've watched the script play out for a long time. And there's videos, by the way, also from Ukraine of people setting up television cameras and waiting for everyone in this crowd. And then they say action and the whole crowd starts running towards the cameras. And then they use that in the news and say, look at this. Everyone's panicking and running. Uh, no, that's fake. It is a scripted video. <laughs> they are using more scripted videos in order to scare people into believing this insane insanity on both sides. Now people randomly hate Russians for no reason. Other people randomly hate Ukrainians for no reason. It's absurdity. You should hate government. Government is a problem. Government's the one doing this. And interestingly, the Russian missile strikes seem to be leading to seven of 11 uh, Pentagon biolabs um, destroyed in Ukraine, and nobody is talking about it as this person posts. Now, I'm trying to get full confirmation on all of these, but I know many of the biolabs have been attacked, and they're probably um, producing fertilizer of some kind. But we know in Chernobyl, there are people that were um, Ukrainians that were building weapons there whatever excuses they feel they need. But I've also heard some um, information from some people that I need to confirm still that I can't confirm at this time, saying that some of the biolabs were working with COVID. Some of the biolabs were like the, at least the culturing of um, fake COVID in vaccine form. Some of them were working on vaccines in general. <clears throat> and that would be a very interesting twist to the story. But again, I need confirmation on that before I could say that is what ha- what is actually happening. So bear with me on that. Again, I want to go to Ukraine if I could get in there. I also need to avoid getting killed immediately when I get in there. Um, so I'm trying to go the legal route and I'm trying to get financing and funding for it, but I can't promise anyone I'll go there. I want to try and go there. I'm going to try and go to Romania or Hungary or one of those places and, and go along the border and at least talk to people running from Ukraine and talk to what's ac- talk to them about what's actually happening because, you know, you, people just don't know what's actually going on. Re- history is revised in real time and there's no way to actually find out what is actually happening on the ground because everything is so skewed and everything's so political and everyone has their sides and everyone has their confirmation bias and everyone has their cognitive dissonance. So it's very difficult without actually seeing for ourselves. And obviously it's none of our business what's happening over there. The only issue is that this could lead to drafts. This could lead to the next step of the global agenda, all out war and destruction, which is something they've been planning for many, many years. All a bunch of wars for Israel and China. And again, I mentioned China. And China is a big part of this because there's at the same time, just like we saw in World War II, Hitler versus the communists and then Japan versus the communists. Now we have this happening again, Russia versus Ukraine, China versus Taiwan. It's a lot of talk about U.S. warships sailing in Taiwan, uh, the Taiwan Strait, and they're calling it provocative. Taiwan reports nine Chinese aircrafts in its air defense zone, Tapai. Uh, response to latest entry coming on day Russia invades Ukraine. A lot of people are scared and fear isn't the way to handle any of this. The best way to handle all of this is to realize that no matter what happens, we're being played and they want us to be in fear and then they can control us. That's how it works. That's why I said from January of 2020, when it came to the whole COVID nonsense and That's still happening right now. And I want to go and report on that in multiple countries as well, because we cannot like it's going to come back and they're going to hit us again with this. But it'll be probably at the same time as war. It's exhausting to think of. But like I've always said, this isn't even close to over. We got years left of this. Point is, um, with all this happening, we have to realize that the best way to play this is to not take sides of countries. Always take the sides of individuals, people, human beings. That's who they're trying to get rid of. They're trying to get rid of humanity. The real war is on humanity. 
That's why we are moving into um, transhumanism, technocracy. So the best way is to be more important. The best way to fight is to be more, uh, more human, more independent. And we will win that way. I've got an interview coming up with Max Egan on the subject. And I recently posted a video with uh, Dr. Andrew Kaufman that I urge everyone to go and watch on our channel where we talk about um, that and more from transhumanism to AIDS and HIV and all that stuff, because there's more agendas pl being played out simultaneously right now. Everyone wants to jump on the bandwagon of the latest big story. I don't believe in that. I just believe in trying to warn people and mobilize people against the insanity of the world that we are being thrown deeply into and conflict with the insane mainstream narrative, which is meant to push people into fear and then compliance, servitude, and giving up everything that it means to be human and eventually giving up their life. Giving up your life for a government is pathetic. It's stupid. Never give up your life for a government. Give up your life for yourself, your principles, and your family, maybe your friends, but not, not for the government. It's absurd. So we have Ukrainians killing Ukrainians, blaming it on Russia. We have Russia actually bombing Ukraine. And then we have protests in Russia where protesters are getting thrown in jail for protesting, which is happening in every country in the world, including Canada and Australia. So don't start pointing fingers. This is how governments operate everywhere. Government is organized crime. We have Ukraine killing Russians for years um, in Ukraine in annexed territories. We have a U.S. puppet a government that has been propped up in Ukraine since 2014. We have the correlation between Russia and China trying to create their own new world order. We have an economic reset and we have um, a lot of fake news coming out meant to scare people. Exaggerate one thing and not talk enough about another. If, that, if you want the nutshell, that's it. That's a nutshell. And um, from there, we don't exactly know what's happening. We can't. Don't trust any mainstream media and don't trust any independent media either. We don't know what's happening. But I'm sure as hell going to try and figure, it, figure out what's happening. So I was going to go to Austria to report on the restrictions there, but then they ended all restrictions in Austria for now. It's all temporary as far as the actual lockdown orders and vaccine mandates go. There's still other restrictions in place, in, including entering the countries, and we'll be reporting on that as well. But right now, we are looking for funding and financing to go and report on the ground uh, for uh, when it comes to restrictions in mul multiple countries that still have serious vaccine restrictions, as well as this Ukraine crisis, as well as, I don't know, even maybe the Chinese Taiwan thing. But that is that is like... That, that's difficult. That's another level of difficulty that um, we have to look into further. I'm down to go where you guys want me to if you fund it. I'm down to go to Afghanistan. I'm down to go to Australia. I'm down to go to Ukraine. Just make sure like we, we do this with your funding. We, we need all the funding that we could get to actually report the truth on the ground. And remember, this is no vacation. Last year, I went to a bunch of places that had horrible restrictions for the purpose of reporting on what was actually happening in those places. And people said, oh, how's the vacation going? Yeah, not a vacation, torture. No one wants to have to do this kind of stuff, but it's my job. I want to tell the truth. It's a moral obligation for humans to, for, for me to tell humans the truth of the matter that we are witnessing in the world. And, you know, the fact is, as I mentioned last year, when I was in Milan um, at these protests, 50,000 people protesting in the streets, guess what? I was the only media there. When I was in Netherlands, 250,000 people uh, protesting in the streets. I was the only media there. Paris, 10,000 people protesting in the street. I was the only media there. That's how they revise history. If they can revise history in one day, imagine what they can do in 80 years, which is what I've been trying to tell people for a while. I mean, as we're going into World War III or IV, because it depends what you view as a world war, um, if we're even going into it or if it's going to settle itself which could happen too, because a lot of people are saying, hey, well, Biden is weak. Well, Biden isn't the one in charge, but Biden's weak. And that's why Russia was waiting for Trump to be out so that they could do this, blah, 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 blah. It's all part of a script one way or another. Point is, World War III, World War IV, whichever one we're in or possibly going into, um, it's really important that we don't, we, we know what led to what happened by documenting the history. 
rather than the war happening and us going, yeah, the war happened. And then everyone's like, yeah, but why? What happened to lead it in to that war? And everyone's like, oh, I don't know. Like, how many of you know why World War II happened? How, how many of you know what led to that? Or World War I, for that matter? Do you know the political issues? Do you know the false flags? Do you know what actually led people into those wars? Do you know about the non-aggression pact with Hitler and Chamberlain? Do you know about how Winston Churchill ripped that up? And do you know that most countries other than Poland and other places, some places around that region invited Hitler in? I mean, do people realize the actual <laughs> levels of propaganda at play that have been given to us over all these decades? And yet here we go again. We need to know the history so we aren't doomed to repeat it. And back then it was hard to go on the ground with video cameras and document things and talk to people and break the stories on the false flags. Today, we can do that and I want to do that. So any funding, any support, I really appreciate it. We have gogetfunding.com, Patreon, Subscribestar. We have PayPal. We have um, a Bitcoin address. We have a Cointree link with multiple different cryptocurrencies that you could donate in. We have Epic Fund Me where you could donate Epic Cash, which is a privacy coin based on the Mimble Wimble protocol. We got many options. And if you want to find out more about Epic Cash, you could go to Telegram and look up the group um, Epic Cash Community and you could find out more there. Uh, I'm not paid by them. I just think that it's really important as we're seeing all these bank accounts get frozen and the SWIFT issue, all that. We need to get out of the global banking system, period. It's, it's imperative. Um, on top of that, you know, we have a Teespring store, we have all that kind of stuff, but I, I just, I want people in any way possible to help su support us and fund us so that we can report this truth. I am willing to go to a place where I have a 25% chance of death so that we can report the truth. So maybe some lives can be saved. We need to destroy these, this puzzle that they're building worldwide. Anyway, and blah, blah, blah. If I, if, they, if I end up dead, it wasn't suicide. It was murder, that kind of stuff. You know, I always have to put that out there because um, I plan to really go hardcore on this. And um, that puts my life seriously in risk. And I'm, I'm well aware of it. But, uh, you know, what is life worth if we're just going to sit down on our hands and watch the world go by? Life is meant to be lived and truth is meant to be told. And lies are meant to be exposed. And good is meant to overcome evil. Always. Anyways, I appreciate everyone watching today. Make sure to check those links below. And of course, rncstore.com, Richardson Nutritional Center, your source for Laetrile Online, made famous by G. Edward Griffin's book, World Without Cancer. Get your apricot seeds, amygdala, and Laetrile, vitamin B17 there. Make sure to go and check out whamsurvival.com and get long-term storable foods there. Who knows how long that supply chain will hold up. Honestly, it could happen at any time, as I've been saying for months. Um, of course, you can uh, find us on BitChute, Odyssey, Rumble, and Brighteon at World Alternative Media. You could find us on Telegram, World Alternative Media, and you could find us on our Telegram channel, World Alternative Media Announcements. We're on dollarvigilante.tv, and of course, we're on Hive, Steemit, and Float.app at at Josh Sigurdsson. Go find us on there and upvote us on places like Hive for sure. Combat against the trolls that are downvoting us. And of course, we're on the bad guys. TikTok and Instagram, World Alternative Media, as well as Twitter at World Alt Media and Getter at World Alt Media. We have many ways that you can help support us. Go and join our newsletter, www.iamband.com. We have many ways that you can help support us. Go and check the links below, my friends. And I appreciate it, everyone. Go check out our recent interviews and reports. Until next time, this is Josh Hirton signing up for World Alternative Media. Find the truth, be the change.